Hello guys and welcome. Today I will show you a movie called Sorority Row. The movie starts off as we see a pajama party at the Theta Pi sorority house in the middle of hazing. Then one by one we are met with the house mother Mrs. Crenshaw and five of the senior class sisters Jessica, Ellie, Claire, Chugs, and finally Cassidy. The girls gather in Jessica's room for shots of tequila to celebrate their senior year and after toasting, Jessica's tells them she has classic video to show them. On her laptop, we see a live feed of the room of Megan who is also part of the girls group in bed with Chug's brother Garrett. And one of them asks why Megan looks like she is not moving and it is revealed she was given a roofies by Garrett which was given by Jessica and Chugs. Megan starts foaming at the mouth, and Garrett starts screaming, which causes the five to run over to the room. Jessica then gives him her keys and tells him to get her car so they can take Megan to the hospital. Once he was gone, Megan wakes up and the group asks what is happening and it is revealed that this is just a prank to get revenge on Garrett cheating on Megan. The prank isn't over though, so the others agree to play along. The group carries Megan and Pyle into Jessica's SUV, drive off. Before they get to the hospital, they tell Garrett that Megan is dead and Jessica tells the driver to keep driving while Garrett asks where they are going. They end up at an abandoned mine and lay Megan down on Cass's jacket. Garrett then walks away to make a call, and Megan complains she can't see with her eyes closed so Megan lays her phone next to her and starts taking a video. Garrett returns and says he has no signal. Jessica then says they should put her in a lake but then Megan says her body might resurface if there is air in her lungs so everyone decided to scatter around to find sharp objects to cut up Megan's body. Garrett still freaking out, as everyone walks away brings an iron tire and stabs Megan through the chest. Megan starts coughing up blood, and dies for real. After a few arguments, Cass walks away to call the police but couldn't find any signals and comes back. When returning she finds out that the girls have dumped the body and cell phone down the mineshaft along with the iron tire. Even though Cass wants to tell the police the group says that they will pin on Cass so they made a pact saying that they last saw Megan at the party and know nothing about her disappearance. Months later it's graduation day, and Cass's boyfriend Andy is the valedictorian giving speech. After he finishes Jessica starts to give a speech and Cass and the group were listening until Ellie sees Megan approaching through the crowd, alive. Ellie screams and then faints. In the kitchen moments later, Jessica was asking everyone what happened and Ellie starts to explain while doing that Megan walks in and it turns out it is not actually Megan but Megan's little sister Maggie. She then says going to pledge to the Theta Pi when she is freshman and wants to be friends with them. This was too much for Ellie so she leaves. Then Jessica says we will see and made her leave. Once Maggie is gone, one of the girls gets a photo text message which a gloved hand is holding a bloody cross wrench. Everyone got scared but agree it's Garrett playing a sick joke. Chug says she'll deal with her brother and goes to her psychiatrist for therapy. After that everyone prepares for the graduation party. Next we see Mrs. Crenshaw giving a speech telling the girls how much she'll miss them and not to thrash the house. Then Jessica meets with her boyfriend's father for a lunch and tells her that he might be running for vice president so he doesn't want any surprises from her and she says not to worry about anything. At her psychiatrist's place, Chugs finds Dr. Rosenberg handcuffed to his bed. He says his last appointment left him like this, and it turns out he doesn't actually give therapy but gives his human fluid to his patients in exchange for drugs. She goes to freshen up, and he hears strange noises and a shadowy figure approaching. He succeeds in unlocking the handcuffs but dies from a flying cross wrench. When Chugs returns she lies down at the couch waiting for the doctor drinking but the killer slams the bottle in her neck and dies chugging the bottle. Back at the Theta house everyone is getting ready for the party and downstairs is Ellie looking for a vodka box for the party but instead finds a bloody jacket that was with Megan's body so she screams. The girls have another talk in Jessica's room. Jessica insists it is Garrett. Ellie thinks Megan came back from the dead and is taking her revenge. At night the party starts and Claire breaks up with Mickey then he tries to bribe two girls into by offering entry wristbands but then gets turned down. He runs upstairs to make up with Claire but finds the killer instead, who stabs his ankle. Mickey tries to get away and through the vent, but gets stuck so the killer slashed his throat through the wall. In the background Ellie witnesses the murder and runs downstairs to tell the group. Jessica gathers the group in the kitchen for another talk. Jessica and Cass decide to go check for Mickey's bodies and enter the room while Claire waits with Ellie in the hall. Jess and Claire find the Mickey's body in the vent with weapon that killed him. They receive another message from Megan Phone which is a video she took the night she died with a text saying to meet them where she died or in 20 minutes the video is going to the police. Jessica tells Cass they need to remain calm, get the other two, and go to the mineshaft. 
As they leave the room, Jessica mentions to Claire that Mickey happens to be dead. Downstairs Jessica tells Kyle she has to take care of something. Kyle seems suspicious and worried and yells after her to take care of whatever it is. Jessica and the group decide to go to the mineshaft. When they get there, Garrett is waiting for them. His hands are bloody. He starts screaming at them and approaches them with a sharp object on his hand. Before he can get to them, Jessica runs him over and kills him. When they check the body they found out it is his own blood because his wrists were cut. After another argument they decide to check the mineshaft. They lower Cassidy down with an old chain but the chain snaps and Cass falls. She uses her phone for light, and it turns out the body is gone. On the cave wall in blood are the words Theta Pi must die. When they park Jessica's car at the house, the party is over and everyone is gone but the music is still on, and outside is covered with foam because the hot tub is broken and not off. Jessica says she's going to find Matt, Jess and Ellie go with her but Claire is irritated by the hot tub noise, so she goes to turn it off. After a few minutes everyone gets a text message from Chug's phone, that says Jessica, Ellie, Cassidy, I'm not coming to the party, because I'm dead. Immediately after that they hear a bang on the door and it is Claire trying to get inside but the door is locked. As Cassidy starts undoing the many locks, Claire gets pulled back in the phone by the killer. Cass runs out with a cane, but Claire is dead with a flare in her mouth burning her face away. Inside, the girls look for Kyle Jessica's boyfriend and find someone under the covers in Jessica's room. It's Maggie, and she claims to have slept with Kyle. They start to fight until Cass and Ellie pull them apart. They hear footsteps and Jessica grabs a fire axe and she swings it as someone turns the corner. It's Crenshaw, who ducks and asks what happened and the girls tell her everything she then tells them to call the cops but once in the room, they realize they've all lost their phones at some point. Maggie thought her sister is alive so she runs off to find her. Downstairs, Crenshaw is searching room by room and encounters the killer in the kitchen. He throws the cross wrench, and she fires. They both miss. While she reloads, he slams into her impaling her on the cross wrench lodged behind her. In another room Maggie finds the killer but when approaching him he throws Molotov at her and the house is on fire. Upstairs, Jessica and Cass decide to check Mickey's body for a cell phone to call for help. Ellie hides in the closet. After a while, they find Kyle, in a Greek robe. He has the fire axe and attacks them. He is apparently pissed that Jessica let all this happen, and, as his girlfriend, it'll reflect badly on him and thus his dad. The girls run to an under-renovation bathroom and find Megan's decomposing corpse hanging in the shower. When they try to escape Kyle swings the axe through the door knocking Jessica out. After chopping open the door, his axe get caught up so Cass runs out. He catches her, but right as he is about to kill her, Andy stabs him in the side of the head. Cass thanks him and then she sees the cross wrench in his pocket. She can't believe he's the killer, but he explains that he just wanted to take care of her. Jessica then comes out of the bathroom he throws the cross wrench, right into her mouth, killing her. Andy says he had to kill everyone else who knew. He also says Ellie is the one that told him about Megan. Andy then says he has to kill Ellie but Cass starts to disagree. Cass lies and tells him Ellie is hiding in the basement. He goes off to find her, and she runs back to Ellie and says they need to leave. In the hall, Andy lunges in between them Andy chase after Cassidy but eventually she knocks him out with the fire extinguisher. Cass then finds Maggie who is trapped by the fire she tells Maggie to jump over. But Maggie says the fire is too wide and too high. Andy enters, he has the cross wrench again and ties it to a rope. He starts throwing it at the girls. The boards under Cass give in. Andy stands above her, cutting her fingers with the cross wrench saying how disappointed he is that she'd betray him after he's even killed for her. But unexpectedly he gets shot with a shotgun by Ellie. He falls back into the fire Ellie helps Cass up and tells Maggie to wrap herself in the thick curtains on the windows behind her and they all get out. Months later the Theta Pi house has been rebuilt and Greek life is back in full swing. The new sisters, including Maggie, are singing a Theta Pi song while gardeners tend the lawn. One gardener with slit wrists is carrying a sharp tool suggesting that Garrett is alive. 